I don't uh, desire to be before you too long today as we go to the book of Hebrews chapter number 9 looking particularly at verses 24 through 28 again that's Hebrews chapter 9 verses 24 through 28 and it reads for Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands which are the figures of the true but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entered into the holy place every year with the blood of others for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. I want to talk to us from a subject that I'm pulling from uh, the 28th verse. Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many and unto them that look for him. Here it is. Shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation? I want to talk to us today from the subject of the second appearance. The second appearance. Amen. Lord, do it in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. The Hebrew writer here, as he's writing and he's speaking to us, he's talking uh, to the readers in relationship uh, to the perfect priesthood of Christ. And we know that the book of Hebrews, as we have coined it before, it is the book of better things. For the book of Hebrews speaks to us not only to the perfect priesthood of Jesus Christ, but it also speaks to us in relationship to a better covenant, a, a new and a more excellent way. It speaks to us to the perfect blood of that perfect sacrifice of the Lamb of God who was slain to take away the sins of the world. The Hebrew writer here in this book, chapter number 9, is speaking to us in relationship to the perfect priesthood of Christ. And specifically in verse number 24, uh, he writes that Christ has not entered into the holy place that is made with hands. In other words, he is speaking to us in reference to the earthly priesthood that they were familiar with under the old covenant or under the old law. The writer here is speaking about that priesthood and their performance of their duties as they would go in and offer the blood on the mercy seat. We realize and we understand that, amen, even in that day, we saw how that the believer, amen, would come and they would bring their sacrifice to the tabernacle or to the temple in the days of the temple and they would come in and they would enter into the gates, amen, of the tabernacle or the temple, amen, and that's where the writer declares to us that we are to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. He says, be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. I believe that the psalmist the writer there when he's writing those words, amen, it is in reflection, amen, of appreciation to the fact that God has allowed or has instituted a way by which the sinner, amen, can come into fellowship with the divine God. And because God, amen, has prescribed that they were to bring, amen, a sacrifice or an offering that was to be offered up to the Lord once a year, amen, God now made a way, amen, that the breach that sin had caused in the relationship of the believer and Christ could now amen, be mended by him bringing a sacrifice. And so because they were appreciative because man, they thank, thank the Lord, amen for allowing or presenting amen, a way for them to be in relationship with God, they were grateful and that's why, brothers and sisters, I know we're not able to gather amen, within the four walls church and 
know that we're not able to gather together and worship as one family, but anytime God has made a way and given you a new day, you ought to open your eyes and open your mouth, amen, and give God praise just for another day. That's what the old church used to say. They would say something like, just another day that the Lord has kept me. He's kept me from all evil with my mind shamed on Jesus. And so it was, amen, that they would come, amen, to the tabernacle and as they would enter into the gates with their sacrifice, amen, they would continue on from the entrance of the gate and they would come to the brazen laver. When they got there, amen, to the brazen laver, they were to wash at the brazen laver. When they would proceed past the brazen laver going to the brazen altar or the altar of sacrifice. For this was the place, amen, that they were to bring their offering to the priest and the priest was to receive their offering there to be slain on the altar and to be given to the Lord. And then the Bible declares that as they proceeded past the brazen laver and the brazen altar, then the priest would take the blood and he would go in, amen, into the holy place. And the Bible declares that when the priest gets into the holy place, amen, there must be table, amen, bread on the table of sure bread. And there, amen, is the menorah or the lighting of the candle. And there also is the altar of incense. And the Bible declares that as the priest has done his duties in making sure that there's fresh bread on the table and making sure, amen, that the candles are lit and making sure that the aroma is like God has prescribed for it to be at the altar of incense, then the Bible declares that the priest now takes the blood into the most holy place. Thank you, Lord. The priest would go in, amen, to the most holy place, and it was there, amen, at the most holy place where he would see this piece of furniture called the mercy seat, and the Bible declares that under the mercy seat, amen, was the Ark of the Covenant, amen. The Bible declares that the Ark of the Covenant, I'm almost there, y'all, the Ark of the Covenant, amen, amen, was representative, amen, or a symbol of the presence of God in the midst of his people. And the Bible declares that within the Ark of the Covenant, amen, was a piece of manna which was part of the testimony of God's provision for his people while they were in the wilderness. Inside of the Ark of the Covenant was a piece, amen, it was Aaron's rod, amen, which signified God's selection to the earthly priesthood, amen. That God had given unto Moses as being the Ten Commandments. On top of the Ark of the Covenant then rested this seat which is called the mercy seat. Thank you Lord. I'm sure you might be asking why was it called the mercy seat? Well the Bible declares that upon the mercy seat there were two cherubs, two images of angels if you will. Amen. And these angels had their wings that were spread towards one another that were standing guard over the presence of the Lord. And the Bible declares that the priest as he came into the most holy place, he was to go to the mercy seat and to sprinkle the blood or to place the blood of the offer. Amen. The offering of the offer. This blood was placed on the mercy seat. And if this blood, amen, if the offering was acceptable unto the Lord, then the Bible, the Bible declares, then the priest would go out, amen, and the people would celebrate at the appearance of the priest, for they understood that their sacrifice appeased the anger of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. So it is that the writer here in verse 24 declares that Christ is not going in to some earthly tabernacle. Amen. For if Christ had merely gone into an earthly tabernacle, then he would have to be consistent in constantly applying his blood. And in order for Christ to constantly apply his blood, then it would be necessary for him to continuously suffer and die. But the writer declares that on this day of atonement, amen, I heard one writer declare, amen, that the day of atonement, it simply stands for at one minute. In other words, this day 
But I can hear the 
sacrifice. Thank you, Lord. Jesus came in his first appearance. He came to deal with the sin problem. How now? How is Jesus dealing with the sin problem? Well, John chapter number 1, verse number 29 and verse 36. It declares, and the next day John, seeing Jesus coming unto him, John said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Verse 36, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, John says again, Behold the Lamb of God. In other words, John keeps referring to Christ as the Lamb of God, because he understands now that Jesus in his first appearance, he did not come as the lion, did not come as the one conquering the world, but he came as a lamb. What writer in the book of Isaiah declared that he was like a lamb that was before his shears as dumb, yet he opened not his mouth. In other words, although Jesus knew Jesus knew everybody's mind. He still humbled himself. The Bible declares even unto the death of the cross. He says, and therefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every man. That's why I declare that I am a Jesus only. Anything. Folk are dying every day, and 
Jesus. We got to preach the truth, y'all. Lord, have mercy. We still got to preach one Lord, one thing, and one baptism. I feel like an old Pentecostal preacher this morning. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. One God who is Father of all, who is above us all. And if you have received Christ, he's in you all. You ought to get excited right there. Hopeless 
times. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Why are you preaching like that when men need to be comforted in such turbulent times? Well, I'm just preaching the book. For I heard the book in First Thessalonians. I'm getting ready to get out of here. I heard the book in First Thessalonians. Chapter number four, verse 18. He said, if you want comfort, you need to comfort one another with the inner word. He said, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord to meet him in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord in other words the Thessalonian writer by the name of Paul he said if you won't comfort be comforted with the fact of Christ's second appearance that the same Jesus that's left us now
consciousness of the soul. That's what we'll be talking about this Wednesday. So please join us on Wednesday. As always, we pray, Lord.